Hello, everybody. Welcome, y'all, to I'm Not Okay Why. I'm Coach Deb. I have my amazing panel uh, today uh, Pastor Carlos, Pastor Sebastian Holly, Minister Dexter Jones. We have a guest in the house, Brenda McCoy. We have Pastor Stacy Sims. And we have other, other panelists that's going to be coming in shortly. But, guys, we're going to be talking about what we're not okay with when it comes to um, the Black community patronizing our, our, our shops, our businesses. What is the problem? Why is it that we don't patronize our own community? Why is it that we don't shop it out, you know, and, and, and buy within our own community? For those of you that are listening, this is Really Real Radio, and we are, I'm not okay, why? Sir, Pastor Holly, I, I really want to dig in. I really want to dig in, sir. I don't want us to waste no time. This subject is a hot topic. We as a people, as a, as a, as a, as a black community, we do not patronize our own community. We do not shop black. There could be a number of reasons why. What do you believe the reason is that we don't buy black? Um, definitely there's several, several reasons, but I, if I had to point a lot down to just one, it would probably, um, um, uh, have to, um, it, 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 it probably have to be the fact that over the course of, uh, our, uh, conditioning here in the United States of America, we've been programmed and taught to fear and hate each other. And as a result of that, um, you know, that our lack of support for one another, our lack of um, walking with each other, you know, has, has really been hindered. And so we have to be intentional um, to make up our minds to, um, you know, uh, participate and support um, one another, or should I say Black. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, Pastor Stacy, you, I, I know that you um, had a, a boutique and um, I know that you understand, um, you know, being a business owner, you share what is, um, you think a reason is that we don't buy black. Oh, yes. I, you know, that was a tough experience for me because I looked for the support of my Black community, um, you know, when I had my boutique, but unfortunately that support was not there. So I saw it firsthand. And my experience was everybody was looking out, looking for a handout. Um, you know, because you my brother, because you my sister, I expect to get a, a discount. And so when you don't give that discount, then they go spend their money in other venues, in other places. And so I dealt with that quite often. You know, when I gave a set price for certain things, oh, I don't want to pay that. Oh, no, that's too high. Oh, no, that's too expensive. But you'll go buy a buck of hair, a hair for $150. You know what I'm saying? From uh, other cultures and not support our own. And so um, I think that, you know, we've gotten into that place uh, because you look like me, then you ought to help me. And, you know, that is not the case. When we're talking about business, business and personal relationships are separate. And so we have to deal with it from that perspective. You know, it's not always, you know, give me, give me, give me, but what are you putting into your community? I think about how with uh, all the rioting and how we destroy communities, uh, uh, and I don't even want to go there because that's, that's not the focus of the conversation, but I keep in mind how we destroy our communities that, that have the stores, that have, you know, the marketplaces and all of those things, then we don't see the larger picture that now 
If you don't have a car, now you got to travel way across town just to get to another store where there might not be uh, predominantly black owned, you know, stores. And so, um, you know, that's just my perspective from a personal experience. Stop looking for the handout. Okay. And, you know, I know that we all have our own story. We all have a story that we can share. Thank you for um, um, coming in, Pastor Larry. But I want to bring in um, Brandon at this time because he has a, um, a wonderful store in the Black community right now and doing quite well. And uh, I know that he, uh, uh, he experiences different uh, biases on a daily basis. And I, I want him to share his perspective. Welcome, Brandon, to I'm Not Okay Why panel. And I'm very interested in you sharing your perspective um, about uh, this very issue right here. Wow, this is something that really I've been wanting to talk about. Um, in my, I would say, two and a half years, really, I've noticed a whole bunch of different things about what we have going on. One, like one thing that I noticed, the ones that know you personally, they're not gonna be the one that support you. It's gonna be the ones that know of you or like your social media presence or something like that. But the ones that you went to school with and stuff like that, they're not really gonna support you. I don't know why. And then a second thing, it's the demographics of the location. My location is in, it's right here in Summer Hill. It's right here on Bartow Street. So it's kind of like, not like the high scale. And a lot of black people don't want to come here because they feel like they are too good to shop here. They feel like they don't know who they are gonna see, who they are gonna bump into. Oh, I don't want him seeing me like this or something like that. But they don't do that when they go in Ross or maybe like a TJ Maxx, they just come and shop. So there's a whole bunch of different topics that I can touch on personally on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, before we get down to the nitty gritty, the rawness of it, I do wanna hear uh, everybody's perspective because we all have biases. I wanna hear everybody's perspective and then I'm gonna give uh, you know, some notation of research that I found, and we're going to talk about it. Dexter, please share your uh, perspective, uh, you know, uh, uh, any experience that you, you know, you, 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 you've you noticed, you know, uh, when it comes to us patronizing and buying Black. Who did you say? You. I, I would really have to go along with just the way we, what Holly said, the way we've been conditioned. I mean, if you if you check out the Jim Crow letter and 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 how, I mean, we were really taught to hate one another. Uh, and then, just where we grew up in Cartersville, it's always been. Not saying that we shouldn't support. I, <laughs> I have a lot of problems with a whole lot of stuff because they don't. They don't sell the, the 3XLTs. So a lot of stuff I can't get. But but just uh, the mindset of the people in Cartersville, everything has always been pro them or pro white. I mean, the only other business that I ever saw that was black, man, this was in like when I got out of high school and that was Sally Wilkins, my uncle. And that's who I worked for. And he had a, a business that was very lucrative at that time. He had a lot of favor from God, but until this new generation who's really starting to, uh, you know, operate in their own and wanting to have their own business, that I really just paid attention to it like that. So, B, I mean, it ain't like that I'm neglecting or anything like that, man. I just think that we got to we gotta do better with, with overcoming what's happened in the past. I That's agree. just me. I agree 100%. Because, I mean, you just think, man, you think back and just the stuff that I've read or, or heard, just stuff my mother and them said how, you know, they, they my mother was, they were really like sharecroppers. She said she used to hate when the people would come and take pictures of them and picking cotton. 
I mean, we never had, we never had, we never been taught. My parents taught me to get a job with good benefits. They never taught me, not like my sister Erin and Jennifer, they from different generations. They trying to do their own thing. So I come from a generation where they just, we, we, was, we was taught to work and have good insurance and benefits and not to have our own. So we just got to do better in educating not only ourselves, but the people that's coming, the kid, the young people that's coming behind us to let them know, man, you can have your own. That's good. And support, and support your own. That's good. Y'all take note because we're going to come back to this, this uh, area right here because I, I believe that's going to uh, make sense as to why we don't get the support from the OGs. We don't get the support from the ones that, uh, you know, planted before us and possibly, you know, didn't get an opportunity or didn't have what they needed to build. And they see you out here doing what they wish they could have had the courage to do. And instead of supporting you, they put they putting their foot on your neck. So we're going to come back to that. That's real good. Pastor Carlos, I want you, sir, to please share your perspective and any experience you yourself ha have uh, dealt with. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you um, for the opportunity to be with this great group of people. Um, so I, I really appreciate everything that's been shared thus far. Um, however, I do want to push some ideas and some thoughts. Um, so I really appreciate what my brother um, Sebastian Holly said about the mindset. So there's, there's certainly a mindset uh, statistics show that when things are presented by black hands that they're less likely to be accepted. So that's a fact of the matter. Um, but there's also logistics. So when we look at staggering statistics that says that the black dollar only stays in our community for six hours, uh, we must couple that with the, the whole picture. And so logistics is, is that they're not a lot of black businesses. So when we get those statistics, it's based on grocery, gas, um, all sorts of commerce. And so the fact of the matter is many of us don't live within a certain amount of miles of a black business. So when we get that statistic about six hours, we gotta, we gotta couple that with the fact that that's the whole budget, that's the whole paycheck. That's good. Um, of it's logistics. And that goes to a point, I think that Dexter was hitting on um, that entrepreneurship. So there's a mindset, but also we must create our own commerce. We must create our own business. Um, I grew up in a house where my father owned his own business as I was growing up, but my father taught me to go to school and go work for somebody else. Um, he was trying to tell me, don't get into this hard construction work. He was trying to teach me a lesson, but at the same time, um, he also put me in a position where somebody, well, I'm dependent upon somebody else for my livelihood. Um, the people that were roofers and concrete workers and electricians, um, they were their own businessmen. They owned their own dis uh, they, they owned their own destiny. They worked hard, um, but they were able to produce something. And I think we've lost that as a people. So we got to have we got to have business to shop with if we're gonna um, affect that black dollar staying in our community for six hours. We got to have we got to have commerce. So not everybody needs to own a store like. Um, Brandon, but everybody needs to have an entrepreneurial spirit. Um, so we need to have multiplicity. We need to have people that have their own grocery stores, that have their own um, gas stations. That, have, that There needs to be opportunity for us to spend our money in the Black community. Um, we got to have a product and we got to have, the, the fact of the matter is everybody on here knows that whether we're on our own business or whether we're working for somebody else, we have to work twice as hard for half to pay. Um, that is a statistic that is just true. We don't have to like it. We don't have to embrace it, but it's a fact. Um, so even in producing our own business, we got to have we got to have a better product. Uh, and so we got to make sure that we have a great product. And I'll say this and be the bad guy in the room. Sometimes with black business, we don't get a better product. We get an inferior product. Um, and that's a couple of reasons. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm ready for the guns to come out. But but that's 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 facts. 
um, our prices. And so when you talk about a black business, a black business um, wrestles because they're having to work twice as hard because they're not getting the business. So it's hard for them to have the prices. But a lot of times when we go in there, um, yes, there is a mentality where people want to hook up and that's wrong. We should be willing to pay and pay premium for black business. But sometimes because they're not doing the business, the prices are sky high in the black community. Um, that's a, that's an issue. I also see, um, and I know that everybody on here operates in excellence, but also sometimes in our community, there's an ISH issue. There's an ish. Um, you want your hair cut? Yeah, come by five ish. Uh, you want you want you want you want to uh, meet for an appointment? It's eleven ish. We got to make sure that we show up on time. Again, it's facts, back, brother. To, facts. It's back to excellence. And so, I'm not suggesting anyone on here or any of our listeners. I'm not trying to insult anybody, but we do have to raise the bar. We can't take our consumers, our customers, for granted. We got to be willing to show up and produce on on a, on a higher caliber, and that's unfortunate. True. I don't believe anybody would deny what you just said because it just hits home. If we're going to be transparent about it, it just, it, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's like a laid back type mentality, you know, where we look at one another, like we'll put up with it. We'll be okay with it. You, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, you know, me, I know you, that type of attitude, you know, how we tend to uh, uh, not be so respectful uh, a person that you know when it comes to them uh, uh, striving to be better. Larry, come on in and share your perspective and your experience uh, with buying black. Oh Lord, just a little bit I've heard has excited me. Well, I hate to say it, but our 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 situation covers a wide genre of things. Um, I'm gonna kind of walk us back. Uh, of course, everybody know about Black Wall Street. Uh, so you gotta think these are very progressive black people making a lot of money and then the white people get upset and they burn things down. <clears throat> so you get this slave mentality that anytime I, that I'm scared to progress and be great because they're just gonna come and destroy it. Uh, so that's one of the things that we actually deal with. And, and I just think after that, after those certain incidents happen, just like it did in slavery, when you pull the strongest black man out and you butt, uh, butt bust them or you put them on a horse and you tear them apart, the next generation say, hey, we can't make you be strong, so you have to be weak in order for you to live, because there's survival through um, But you you bring us here, we, I, I look at, I look at rappers, if, 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 a rapper can say for Sasha, and we as a people working at McDonald's would take all our money and try to buy, buy a Versace shirt. Stop. If we say, if, if we say a certain alcohol brand, Hennessy, Ciroc, we would we would do whatever it takes. Notice, notice this. They never ever say a black owned person, there's a, a guy that makes watches and I'm about one too. I think it's twine and something. Make beautiful watches. You'll never hear a rapper talk about that. We don't support ours even when we're up there. And, but I, but I, I like what Pastor, uh, Pastor uh, Calhoun said that, uh, it was Calhoun or Hollis, the way it was, was last. You, you, have, you, you have to give a great product. But the reason why we can't give great products because we don't know how to network. I was looking at this thing because um, I have some. They, they wouldn't watch it. Here in America, they cost forty-five to a hundred dollars, depending on who you buy it from. But these three white gentlemen, they sent two of them over there to China, went to the manufacturer, and they get that same watch, hey. forty-five, fifty dollars for. They get that same watch for five dollars. We, you have to invest in something in order to get it. We don't have to have inferior products because we can go straight to the manufacturers, but we don't think that way. We think we got to go through this white person to get this white, and we don't have to. We can go to China ourselves and get it. Look at, look at what Akon did, has uh, done over there in Africa. He has started his own city by, by equipment and materials that was just sitting somewhere in China. 
So we have to we we have to use we have to use what we we have to use what we know to do. We don't always have to hustle. Imagine if we if we hustle finances and we hustle business like we do drugs. I used to sell drugs, so I know that the, the you you want to go find the best product you can find because you want them to have the best hassle that can keep coming back to you. So what if you did that same thing with the watch that you're selling? I want it to be the best, but I want to get it at a fair price. So I think when we start doing that, I think we'll be better. But the main thing is, uh, like the pastor said before, I, I, some of our customer service suck. Some of our buildings. I, I know of a place here in Chattanooga right now. Since I was a little boy at 10 years old, they still, do y'all not know, and I'm, I'm not being funny. I'm 50 years old. They still got the same furniture, the same gold and sparkle seat when I was 10 years old. We have to we we have to progress, and I know I can hear somebody saying, "Well, they don't make the money." Well, you can make the money. So you you see this barbecue stand, and you see this big Cadillac Escalade. So we know that you're not putting back in the business; you're putting it in your car. Why are you doing that? Because you want the community to think you've made it. Well, if they see that Cadillac Escalade, guess what they say? Oh, they don't need no more money. So can I get a discount? So it, I mean, it's just a big old cycle of things. To me, it's just not one specific thing. I just think, you know, and, and I go even step further. I can tell you how the church could help. If all the churches got the black churches got together and say, hey, we're gonna get a book of all the black business, and we're gonna issue them out to every church, and we're gonna say, let this be your first stop before you go anywhere else. Can you imagine how much even if just half of the people went? Look how business will flourish. So I'm I'm finished, but it's it's just a gamut of things when you when you're dealing with this. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. This is like so, such a deep subject because, you know, sadly, it's been proven repeatedly that Americans generally would prefer to buy from a white vendor than a black one. Let's just be honest. Okay, so what I'm going to do, Brandon, I, I want you, sir, to uh, be transparent and uh, answer the question, you know, is, is there a lack of trust? And before you do, I'm going to also give uh, to Stacy. I want you to think about this question um, regarding, you know, us as a community. Do we have an unconscious bias against our own? So I want you to think about that, but Brandon, go ahead and, and uh, answer the question and elaborate on what I just mentioned. Okay, so based on- Is there a lack trust, of trust? Yes. Is there, all right, all right. So there is obviously a huge lack of trust in the black community. The only reason that I say that is because there are certain people that don't wanna come and shop where they think something is going on. Where there's too many black people, they always think something negative is going on. Um, you know, you know, like I hear it every week, maybe, maybe every other week, that you know, that like somebody is doing something or somebody's doing something, but I'm a store, you know, and I can't help what goes on down the street or this place or this place. This is still the black community and nobody's trying to help just get everything back clean in the way it's supposed to be. If anything is going on that we don't know. So really, I think there's not going to be any trust in the black community until everybody start coming back to the black community, trying to save it and make it right. Good answer. Stacy. Do we have an unconscious bias uh, against our own? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and some of it may not be unconscious. <laughs> but I, do, I talk about this all the time, how, um, and not just, you know, about the Black community, about how unconscious biases are there, I believe, in every individual. And it's not until we're put in those uh, situations where, you know, they, uh, 
you know, they become known to us. And so I've even seen myself, I'm going to put myself out there. I've even seen myself uh, be biased to uh, my own community. And, you know, I was talking to, um, and this wasn't just about business. I was talking to um, a young lady who was a white woman and, you know, she was talking about, I think I mentioned this before, she was talking about, you know, she's afraid to go into the black communities, you know, um, you know, because of all of the, the, uh, the stereotypes that she's heard. So she doesn't want to go there either. You know, she's heard about shootings and killings and so forth. And so I said, well, do you think I want to go where they're shooting and killing? You know, and so, you know, it made her think, like, you're right. You know, why would you put yourself in that situation, even though you're from that culture? You know, you think the same way, you know. And so I think it's, it's we have to be sensitive. And I go back to being culturally competent about who we are as a culture. You know, as far as businesses are concerned, we have that crab mentality, a lot of us in the black community have that crab mentality. If, if you can't have it, if I can't have it, you can't have it either. So I'm going to try to pull you down. You know, jealousy is real. And so uh, I forgot who it was, whether it was Brandon or uh, Pastor Calhoun, you know, when they said you don't get the support of your friends or your families or those closest to you. And I think that's a lot to do with, with jealousy. Let's be real. You know, and so I think all of those things are prevalent and have been hazardous to uh, supporting black businesses. And yes, there are many, many unconscious biases and some some are not. They're just biased, point blank, period. Pastor Holly, do we lack professional do we lack professionalism, sir? Hold it right there. I want you to think on that. Uh, Dexter, I want you to answer the question, uh, are we too comfortable with one another? Okay? That's for you, Dexter. Are we too comfortable with one another? And Pastor Holly, do we lack professionalism? Now, when we're dealing with um, professionalism in our execution, um, even just having a, a a spirit of excellence, um, some of it can be related to um, culture, but I would say uh, what I see and experience that a lot of it is more associated with, you know, geographical location. Um, there's a spirit over our community here in Bartow County that is just, just very impoverished. So whether it's white people or black people, you see the same lack of excellence, lack of professionalism, just lack of consistency. You know, there's just a big lack of professional professionalism, period. You know, where if you go 30 minutes south, you know, um, you see something totally different. You see a different degree of execution. I can honestly say within, um, and I've lived all over the United States, but I can honestly say, that within the last, I want to say 15 years, generally, um, um, in, 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 in our area, um, and maybe even let's say Kennesaw, Marietta, where I've seen black businesses start up, 90% um, of the times there has been a, a real assertive effort to put forth excellence and professionalism and a really quality product. I'm seeing that more so than the 10% of people who just continue to do the same, you know, uh, lackadais lackadaisical thing. Uh, but that the biggest point is, and this is something that we all have to consider, if there's no intentionality in your liberty, in your freedom, you know, this conditioning is going to plague you, whether it's in your ability to start a business or even just support a business. Either way, it's, it's still the same dilemma at the base of it. It's the same conditioning problem. It's the same uh, when Brother Larry was talking about the fear me mechanism. Um, that's still real. Like you still have this mindset 
um, that black people have that, you know, that they're, they're only willing and available to go to a certain height in anything they're doing because there's still a fear that if I come out from under the radar, the white man going to get me. I prom- and that's mind blowing to me that I still run into those attitudes and those, those you know, that thinking. Um, I can honestly say this. I've been entre- entrepreneur my entire uh, life. Like I remember the first business I started, I was 13 years old with the first business I uh, I started myself on my own, you know, um, it was bootleg to death. My mom bought me tools, uh, wood tools, and I started building plant holders and, and uh, porch stands. That was the things I was building. And, and, and I was blessed enough because I was 13 years old. People supported me because I was young because what I was selling was garbage, you know, as far as the quality of the stuff. But I, that's just how I've always been shaped. My mom shaped me like that. She was very entrepreneurial, very, uh, you know, business oriented, but she always had a mindset of professionalism. So I always try to give people that grace when I go to them, you know, but, uh, but, but really, uh, as I grew, grew myself and living in different areas, you see, you see some of the same elements in the way that black people act and treat each other. And, uh, and just like sister, uh, or pastor Stacy, I should say, uh, pastor Stacy Sims was, was saying, you know, the reality of it is that when you're dealing with uh, people who who are trying to have something and trying to get something, but it feels like dealing with your own people that they pull the hardest against you and pull you down because, you know, it's that crab is in a bucket mentality. Um, that's real stuff. It's so real. It's, I mean, it's real life. Like I, I've been um, writing and selling books now for several years, you know, and, um, and I got 5,000 Facebook friends, you know what I'm saying? You know, as you know, time to time I have to go through and, um, and clean it out and, and, and make room for new friends and everything because I'm always, you know, in the interaction and connecting with new people and different things. Uh, but real talk, none of my books have, ne- have, have never been supported by the fan base on, on social media or on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? The most of my books, those sales happen, you know, in different engagements and different, uh, uh, churches and in different um, convocations because I get a chance to do a lot of uh, conferences and convocations uh, even small bible colleges all around the east um, you know has been the big support and has been a big advantage for me but you think about having 5,000 Facebook fr- uh, uh, friends and, the, and, the, and legitimately I know I mean personally know at least 4,000 of those friends you know what I'm saying? And, and a lot, I have a lot of family too that's connected to me and they don't support me. They don't, they don't buy my books, you know what I mean? Different things like that. Um, you know, they'll text me and tell me they're proud of what I'm doing and this and that, but I don't get any type of real tangible support from those people. Even when I worked in sales and trying to sell different things, one of the first principles, you know, that was always brought up is the fact that you can't expect support from those that are closest to you, that you're going to have to you know, tap out or reach out, you know what I'm saying? Don't just expect support from people that you know and people that know you because it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You know. And you're right about it, uh, Pastor Holly. Undoubtedly, you know, Black businesses need Black support. That's real talk. You know, it's tough for us as Black people to, to own our own businesses. And I believe it's, it's just my opinion because, Dexter, I want you... Uh, to come in and I want you to answer the question, um, sir, if you feel that uh, we're too comfortable with one another because sometimes because of that, my opinion, we get, the service is poorly. The service that we get is just not, you know, it's just not what we would give our white counterparts. You know what I'm saying? Uh, The customer service is whack. So I, I, I want to know from you, because see, it takes me back to what Pastor Carlos was saying earlier about that 11-ish situation. You know, that comes because, in my opinion, we are too comfortable. We don't feel like we owe one another the respect, you know, of true customer service. So... Uh, what, what, what is your perspective on that? Do you feel too, sir, that uh, 
we are too comfortable with each other. So we provide less than professional service. Dexter. It's funny. I mean, me and my foot, my younger sister, we had a discussion two nights ago just about I, I think it's I think it's just us not loving each other and wanting to support each other. Uh, she was telling me the other night, she, she said, you know, I, I would expect a lot of my family as close as we are as family in, in the body that they will support more. And when she got some family members that she that, that, that comes and supports her, but she said most of her clients are from out of town. Uh, I don't know, man. I just think it's the the mentality that's been given us throughout the years, just just to not support the crab up, crab up, crab in the barrel mentality. Uh, me personally, it, it other than my uncle is the only black business that I ever saw in Cartersville, and then. Now I'm gonna tell you now, working with Holly, Holly had ideas even before, you know, that, that he really came to Christ. And he used to tell me a lot of stuff, but I could I couldn't really comprehend at the time what he was saying. Uh, I just think it's gonna take from this this moment on, man, that the people that this just rocking the wisdom, Holly Carlos is just educating the kids that's coming after us because. I mean, we, we we really don't support each other. We don't like to see another brother or another sister get ahead. Well, if she getting on, ahead, now. I mean, you know, they're Come gonna throw now. a lot of. They, it's really throwing a lot of salt, and it's it's still going on now. And, and this next generation really has got the vision of wanting to have their own thing, but it's still a lot of self hate, you know, not wanting to support. So I mean, that's where I stand on it. I mean, just learning to learn how to, you know, support other people's business. You, you're, right, you're right about it. At the end of the day, it's the crabs in the bucket. Uh, uh, Pastor Stacey, you want to come in on that? Hey, yes, I wanted to com comment on us being comfortable with one another. I just can give an example. Uh, my husband and I just ventured into uh, uh, trucking and so uh, we got our son to to be our first driver. And, you know, I, I oftentimes find myself having to coach him on how to handle the business uh, because he feels like, well, this is my mom, so I can just do how I want to do, you know, or, you know, when you're out and you're interacting with, uh, the vendors or the uh, carriers, you know, you have to be professional. And I, I have to tell him, look, this is, this is real. This is a real business. Just because I'm your mother does not mean you don't handle our business as you would someone else. If you were going to a nine to five, you know, and your dress code and, uh, you know, the way you present your appearance, that's a that that's the main thing, your first impression. And you see this quite often in our communities. You know, you walk into a McDonald's or you walk into a, a, a retail store and you see us looking exactly the way they expect us to look, you know. And so, you know, you have all these things sticking up in your head and you know, and you want somebody to come buy something from you? No, you know, and so I, I have to coach my son. You know, his generation, they don't know anything about customer service at all, whatsoever. Um, and I have several, you know, 21, 22, you know, stepchildren and my biological children. And, you know, it's just, it's just terrible, but yes, us being comfortable with one another has hindered our growth in, in entrepreneurship. And I believe that it's challenging, uh, sis. I believe that it's very challenging uh, for us to patronize black owned businesses for that reason. You can grow up in the neighborhood with somebody, you can know their past and that can get in the way 
of them trusting your business. Brendan, I want you to speak on that because you have set the bar so high in Cartersville, Georgia, in the community, in the black community, where people have sat back with their arms folded, waiting for you to fail. And you have surpassed, you know, what they expected to a place where you're being awarded by the dignitarians in the community. You know, you're being uh, uh, praised, but I, I do believe that you're still walking in a place where you're not letting that phase you because you know that you, that you can be praised today and tomorrow it can be something else. All right, so really I think it's based on structure, all right? So the reason I say structure is because the black folks that's in the black um, neighborhoods and in the, I would say more like a, uh, maybe like a community, we're not really moving the dollar like we should move the dollar. And I'm gonna break that down. All right, so let's just say we had 20 black businesses, right? And we all shot with each other and we moved that dollar around. So everybody bank account, that's gonna look like everybody's making good business. That's gonna give us these loans in the next year, in the next freaking two years and stuff like that, right? But we're not even teaching each other that one person might do it, but he wanna hold the key. So that's what I think a lot of stuff is going wrong because everybody wanna hold the key. So let's just say if I see Mr. Holly, he's selling books, right? And I got a book idea. Knowing good and well, I don't even make books. But being around him, He's going to slightly show me a whole lot of stuff and I'm going to take the game. Once I take the game, then he's going to be looking like, well, dang, he didn't even tell me he was going to do that. Or maybe he was going to tell you he was going to do that. But that's just another skill that that person got. Right. See, what we'll rather do is be like more like I would say more like the crabs in the bucket because everybody want to get on top fast instead of just going and support the community and try to make it better. So let's just say if Davia is selling, I would say like perfume or something like that, right? Instead of going to get the perfume, let's go shop with her and let's try to make her business the biggest and the best business. Let's give her pointers and ways that she's weak because nobody's perfect. No business is going to be perfect. Really, I just feel like that a lot of people are rather sit back and talk about someone or someone's business than rather just Go ahead and pull up on that person and be like, hey, you need to tighten up in this area. You need to tighten up this area. I think people get lost in wanting to be better than the next person. And that's 100% whack to me. Um, I think that I think that we should show like more genuine love. Like I don't see the the uh, genuine love. Normally I see a person that's wanting to shop black business just to say they shop black business and just to post it on Facebook that they shop black business. But you don't see that person month after month or week after week or nothing like that. You only see them every once in a while just to say they shop black business. So you want to add to that, uh, Pastor Carlos? Nah, I, re I really appreciate what uh, Brandon was sharing. Um, I think, so I shared a lot in the beginning, but I think we have to be intentional um, because, and I'd love to talk about that a little bit more, the lack of black businesses and why there's a lack of black businesses. Um, but because there is a lack of black, black businesses, it may not always be convenient. Um, so Walmart and Target, are probably convenient. Publix and Kroger are probably convenient. Um, in different areas, black business may not always be convenient. So I think um, Holly spoke about it and Brandon spoke about it, but there has to be, a, we have to be intentional. So it, it, you have to make your mind up that you're going to spend your money in, the, in a black business. Um, and so sometimes that may mean driving out of your way. That may mean um, doing some things, but I think that's significant. I, I, can, be, I can be somewhat critical um, about where I spend my money, 
um, because I'm I'm in a I provide service to people through my business, and so um, I expect great service. But also, we have to be intentional. And again, I stated earlier, but I, I want to reiterate that we should be willing to pay premium to spend money in black business. Okay. Now, I'm really, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested too um, in knowing if you all feel that uh, black businesses are challenged by systemic racism. The neighborhood in which the business is in, such as where Brandon's neighborhood is, um, where possibly, now I haven't seen it, but I know about Cartersville, and I remember a time where you couldn't do a fish fry without police sitting uh, in, a, in a circle somewhere just waiting for something to go down so that they could be there to, you know, uh, racially profile or whatever. Uh, when it comes to the business, black business, do you believe, because see, you gotta consider like what Stacy was talking about with her trying to somehow coach her son on understanding the professionalism and customer service of black business. Now she's dealing with those pressures. Then it may be someone else is dealing with the pressures of, you know, the, their, their past and building a business from scratch and trying to do something different, you know, trying to, you know, uh, uh, not allow their past to affect their future. But the heaviness of the possibility that they are being racially profiled, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, possibly just uh, terrorized, you know, uh, and they're trying to work an honest business. This is happening, y'all. This is happening. And most times it's happening in the, the, the in our communities. Larry, speak on that. Uh, yes, ma'am, I, I truly do believe that. I mean, I can take you a step further. It's, it, it even starts from the moment that you want to start a business and you seek to get money to start a business. When they ask you for your business plan and you know, they want you to make X amount of money before they let you borrow any money. And, but you get other nationalities that'll come over and they practically give them grant money and then let them be tax free. And they done found the way that when it gets time for them to start paying taxes, they just sell it to their brothers and sisters that come over. So it, it, it initially starts there um, because we, we are discriminated against from even when we go to banks just to try to get a loan for a business. Um, <clears throat> because I truly believe, like here in Chattanooga, <clears throat> we have a place that used to be called Ninth Street. And it was just a street full of black people where a lot of black vendors went to the bank and tried to ask for money so they can so they can upgrade a lot of buildings, remodel, but they wouldn't give it to them. But now as soon as they started uh, regentrification, now the city wanted to dump all this money into this part into this part into this uh, street because I mean it's downtown. And, and, and so far with our business also, as you were saying, they, they do, there is a stigma, like Mr. Brandon was saying, there is a stigma is that when we congregate, you know, now there's a gang or there's drug activity going on or something's going on. And so the station said it best, I mean, Pastor Stacey, I'm sorry, Pastor Stacey said it best when she said people stereotypes of us about being, you know, um, you know, when you go here, this and this is gonna happen. But you, but but you, but people don't stop going to Walmart. They didn't have mass shootings. People don't stop. It's the mindset that we have about us, um, and 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 we have to change it. Uh, Dexter said it best, and Pastor Hollywood said it best. We have to change our mindset about us in business, because even though it may be systemic, one thing I've learned about other people that skin that's lighter than ours. If they see a profit to be made, they're investing. Because remember, all of us of age, remember back in the day when NWA and all them, uh, they had a two live crew, how they crushed all the CDs. 
where when they found out how much money these guys were making out of the back of their trunk of their vehicles, they was like, we need to tap into that. And I truly believe that we could break that systemic uh, racism part that's in there. If we had somebody, let's just say, uh, let's just say we had, uh, let's take Michael Jordan. He said, hey, man, we, I like this watch. I'm wearing this watch. This black guy bought it. Then you're going to start seeing kids buy it. So I believe we can be an asset to each other to tear down that wall because I don't care. I do not care how racist you are. When you start dealing with green money, I will pull my racist aside just so I can make some money. You know, if I just have to sit there and laugh with you. But, but, but I truly believe that we could tear down that wall, but we first have to come together as a people and we have to start sponsoring. Look, look, look at what Oprah Winfrey did. I'm going to show you this and I'll be quiet. Oprah Winfrey just talked about Weight Watchers. She just had a conversation about it. She, then she got into it. Look how it's fight. Now imagine if she took that same energy and put it into someone uh, that, that, like Mr. Brandon. Say Mr. I don't know what Mr. Brandon said, but just say Mr. Brandon got a boutique. And she say, you know, I went to Cartersville. I seen this boutique, this young man doing such and such and such. Brandon's business will blow up. And I don't care what color they are. Some white people will come to his business because they want to know and hear why did Oprah Winfrey like it. So it's, it's an all around thing, but we can, we can truly break that systemic racism, but we have to break it first with money, and, but we have to change our mentality of how we think. That's, that's, that's the real key to it. Because even in Black Wall Street, they were super racist. But you know what they did? They stayed on their side and they helped each other. But guess what? The white people would go over there to the black neighborhoods and come and get them to come over here and build for them. Because we had the skills. We had the, the labor. We was able to labor and have the mindset. But we don't do that no more. Because if you notice, they have taken all the trade schools and different things that, that, that black people could have business. They have taken them away from us and now have put them in the, in the white neighborhoods. All the different trades of electrician and all that. Or they have it in certain schools that are out of our district. And that's hard for our district to get to. So that, if we really wanted to break it down when it comes to that, we could because money, I don't care how racist you are, I still want your money. Period. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to do two minutes each. And what I want to do with these, with the two minutes from everybody, uh, starting with Pastor Carlos, I want you to use your two minutes to talk about um, the avoiding the, the, the roadblocks of trying to build the black business and stand, stick and stay. Because to be a black business owner in, in America, it means enduring relentless racist road, roadblocks and also dealing with your own people because your own people can be so negative. That energy can be thick as suck. You can't do this. You can't do that. I mean, it's like they can just mess your whole thinking up. You just try, you, you're trying to be something that you're not. You know, just different crazy talk. So use the two minutes. Everybody, this, this is for everybody. Use your two minutes to uh, speak to someone that is, you know, trying to build their own brand that has a business and they're really feeling like they just want to throw in the towel because there's no encouragement. You know, there's no business from their black, from their community and they want business from their community. There's got to be a way. There's got to be a way that we, you know, that there, there has to be a strategy that we can come up with that we, that can be alluded to uh, seducing our own people to change their way of thinking, that conditioned thinking that I'm, 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 I'm a joke. You know, I, I, I want what you got and I don't want to be a blessing to you. Take it away, bro. So avoiding the roadblocks, I, I want to speak to the person who is an entrepreneur. First of all, I want to tell you to be uniquely you. Um, don't try to be someone you're not specialized and being you. Um, so I think one of the issues that we run into is that um, 
it's like when we're in high school and everybody wants, yes, a young black man, what he wants to be. And everybody wants to be in the NFL. Everybody wants to be in the NBA. Um, but the truth is God has gifted so many of us, so many different ways um, that in your business model, be uniquely you. Um, operate in excellence. Someone once said, if you build a better mousetrap, the world will be the path to your door. Um, it's, it's, it's tough, it's hard, but it's true that we have to work harder. We have to perform better. But here's the, here's the interesting fact, and I'll close with this. The interesting fact is we've already proved that we can do it. Uh, we are resilient. We are, we are just uh, amazing. We take, we take scraps of food and create um, delicacies. We are a people that are so resilient and so creative and innovative that, that we can do it. We've proven it over and over again. Don't give up, don't give in, keep pressing, keep pressing hard and be excellent. Amen. Pastor Holly. I, um, I absolutely want to agree, agree with 100% everything that uh, Pastor uh, Carlos Calhoun said. Um, the other thing I would like to add to <clears throat> every, if there's one thing I could, could say to every black person on planet earth, the first one would be, you have to be intentional to break the conditioning. Most of the time we're spending the energy arguing on whether the conditioning exists. Well, that's not the question. The proof is in the pudding. I mean, it's not, it's obvious that the conditioning exists. And it's obvious that each and every one of us that were raised in the United States of America uh, has been affected by the conditioning that has shaped the inferiority complexes, the slave mindedness and all of that. And that's really important to understand. <clears throat> First of all, so you have to be intentional. Number two, for every black believer, the reality of it is, is there's deliverance uh, in your salvation. As long as I'm thinking about salvation from a qualification-based mindset, I have no intentionality to walk out deliverance. And if I do have some intentionality of walking out deliverance, it's associated with the same qualification-based thinking. And that's the problem because as long as this qualification-based thinking is involved instead of a manifestation-based thinking, you won't have any intentionality on actually being free. And so you continue to respond to the conditioning, you know, uh, associated right along with your religious consciousness. And that fortifies that within your existence and your very being, instead of giving you the availability to be free, legitimately free from the emotional deficits, from, you know, all of it. You know, I mean, so that you can have the freedom to see yourself like God sees you, that you may manifest yourself on that same premise, on that same principle, you know, that you can be the best you, uh, period, you know, and that and that's so rich all by itself. So then when you start thinking about entrepreneurship, which is another biblical principle, you know, you walk it out as if it's sacred and spiritual like it is, instead of thinking that, you know, spiritual and economics are two separate realities. They're not two separate realities. It's just God's design and your design. And if I really want to see myself walk fully in what God has already made available to me, I'm going to have to yield my plans and agree with his. And that way, my esteem, worth, and all of that is where it should be, and my manifestation will uh, will achieve exactly what it was always intended to. Absolutely, absolutely, Brandon, your two minutes. Never stop believing in you. First thing that I want to say: never stop believing in you, and never let your past stop you from being what you're going to be and who you see that you're going to be. You got to grow your business like a baby. You got to believe in it. Like everything, you got to breathe it. You got to smell it. You got to wake up and be dedicated to it. You're going to make a whole bunch of sacrifices that you don't want to make. You still got to make them because you got to see the end goal. And that's the ultimate goal. Everybody want to get rich quick, but it don't happen like that. Come on. You might have to fail once, you might have to fail twice, you might have to fail three times, but you'll get something as long as you don't stop, as long as you don't quit. See, that's what makes champions. They never quit. So don't try to start a business in one month and it's not doing what it's doing for you and then try to quit because you're, you're never gonna get nothing that you're supposed to get out of it because you just saw yourself short. So don't never sell yourself short and do a lot of research. 
you got to do research. Research is the key. Social media, that's the key. Facebook is the key. Snapchat and Instagram. You got to promote because whoever don't promote, they just going to have products just sitting on the shelf. You like, you got to promote night and day. As soon as you get off work, you got to go home and work on your promotion for the next day. You got to keep it going and keep it going and keep it going. The, the, the uh, more that you're positive, the more business that you're going to get. The more negative that you seem on Facebook, the less business that you're going to get. Nobody wants to support somebody that put their personal business on Facebook and talk a certain way and move a certain way. Nobody's going to support you. But if you move in the right way, then, you know, you'll draw way more attention. Um, let's see. All right. So I see a lot of people right now, they're starting these new businesses and they don't have their business paperwork right. First, you need to get your business paperwork right. That should be number one. You, you need a website. You need to be listed on Google. You need to have a social media presence. You need to have all your paperwork, A1. That way, you can go get you a business bank account. That's if you're trying to go that route. And you don't have to have a brick and mortar just to get the financial backing from the loans and the grants. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, you got to stay down with it because, I mean, if you don't, then you're just going to fail. See, I started with just like one T-shirt from the trunk of my car, but I knew that, you know, that's not just going to take me where I want to be. And then that, that one T-shirt landed me just to have a brick and mortar shop. From the brick and mortar shop, this was already known just to be a certain type of clothing store that you can get anything. So what I did was, as soon as these people walk in and they say, hey, you don't have any jeans? I'm like, nah, the only thing I got is t-shirts, but next time you come here, I have jeans. So what I did was I went and dipped in my money and went and bought jeans. So now I got jeans. The next person come in, hey, let me know when you get some hats. I want a Falcon hat. Oh, all right, so I'll go down there and I get Falcon hats. Okay, all right, next person wants shoes. So you gotta keep on trying to try new things and something is gonna pop for you. As soon as it pop, you good you went the right way, your whole community is not gonna steer you wrong. They're, they're gonna tell you what they want and what they need. All right. Is that two minutes? Yes, you did your thing. Okay, Dexter, you get, you do your two, two minutes, sir. It probably won't take me two minutes. I would just say, I mean, God is declaring his works through us. Just like a lot of stuff that I'm doing now with nonprofit and building a nonprofit, I had no idea how to do it. I mean, you know, my mom and daddy, my mama, she did a lot in the community, but she she didn't pass that information along about nonprofit and all of that. So I had to reach out to people. I had to get beyond myself and 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 get beyond pride and say, look, man, I need some advice. Can you help me? So I would say anything in business. Get with Holly. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> but but get with cats that have information. You right. That, that, yeah, yeah. I, man, Holly done taught me so much. He he already know, just as a friend. But 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 get with individuals that 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 can guide you in the right direction. If if we for the people, then we should be willing to give up information to help people get better. So just just getting mentors, getting Live coaches, what, what, whatever, whatever you need to make it, link up with people. That's all I got. I totally agree. Larry, give us two minutes, sir. Well, I won't have to. Everybody said everything greatly. I mean, you can't. I mean, they can't get a better plan than what they said. But I, I will leave with this. Uh, I agree with Pastor Holly and everybody, and Pastor Calhoun, uh, and Mr. Dexter, and Mr. Brandon, and Pastor Stacy. Uh, but I will say this, that uh, anything you do, if you put God first, it's bound to happen. Um, and sometimes he may start you off, like uh, Mr. Brandon said, start off with a shirt. But then God may say, hey, you need to ask some jeans because those, God is sending people in to help, you know, help you with your business. But I truly believe, we, and, and something I wanted to just share, um, we were talking about crabs and buckets. And I kind of did a little research on that thought. And... Um, I read this 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 uh, 
section that says the reason why crabs and the bucks pull each other down is because they're trying to go back to, to the ocean where they come from. And I truly believe that if we go back, as Pastor Calhoun said, the resilience, Pastor Holly said, the resilience that we have as people, we didn't believe in faith. Faith wasn't even an option. We took something to make, we took nothing to make something out of it. Uh, there's a company now that sells chitlins all day long, but they didn't wasn't even chitlins at first. But we take, if we don't give up and don't give away our stuff, I truly believe that we'll be better people. But I just truly believe that we love each other as we should. I truly believe that we'll be, could be a blessing to each other. I, I, totally, so. uh, I totally agree uh, with you, uh, Pastor Larry. I want everybody to take this opportunity to please share your um your social media also if you are uh if you have books you know your store whatever it is that you have going on take this opportunity now to uh share with the people what it is that uh that you have so that they can reach out and uh patronize you uh starting with you pastor carlos well thank you so much um so a pastor church but that's the baptist church in plainville georgia and that's 440 Plainville Road. You can find us on Facebook, uh, Bethesda Baptist Plainville. Uh, also, we have a push prayer call every Thursday morning at 730, where we literally push, we pray until something happens. We pray hard and we praise God even harder. I lead a ministry called H4, where we have a Bible college that's thriving and growing. Um, and so we are in our ninth <laughs> semester of the Bible college. Uh, we also have a leadership conference. So um, we'd love to see your support. You can get at us on Facebook or um, our website, um, H4 Ministries. Thanks. Pastor Holly, I'm sorry, I was on mute, sir. Please go ahead and uh, let the people know how they can purchase your books and also how they can actually uh, reach out to you for bookings uh, or, or anything. Uh, we can do all of those things on SebastianHollyMinistries.com. SebastianHollyMinistries.com. Uh, we also lead a, a group, a church, a Unity Worship in Cartersville, Georgia, 214 Nelson Street. Um, and, and we'd love to see you, love to have your support. And this is in Cartersville, Georgia, right, sir? Yes. Okay. Dexter, let the people know how they can reach out to you for bookings uh, because you have a unique ministry. Uh, I have a nonprofit called Gap Fillers. Uh, you can hit me up on Facebook under Dexter Jones or Instagram. It's, uh, it's Gap Fillers. I just deal with. With, with young men uh, that had had male role models or father figures in their lives. So you can reach out to either one of those. All right, Pastor Larry, please share with the people how they can reach out to you, sir, uh, for any bookings and uh, your unique ministry. Uh, yes, you can reach me on Facebook at Larry King Jr. Uh, that's where I get most of my information from. I'm also the uh, pastor of Protecting Love Ministry. And basically what we deal with is we deal with uh, uh, youth, the youth and young adults. Uh, that's the ministry that we have. Uh, me and my sister also have gang ministry, which the acronym is God Always Needs the Soldiers. That's where we deal with the athletic part. So we deal with mind, body, and soul. So the gang ministry is our activity. And then the last but not least, our freedom ministry. Is where young people can come and they can minister to God in their own talents, whether it be rapping, dancing, singing, poetry, or just doing public speaking. Uh, but yes, once again, you can reach me at Larry King Jr. on Facebook. Okay, Brandon, we haven't mentioned your store not one time through the, the uh, program, and I'm excited for you to share with the people your store and also how they can come and patronize um, you, sir, you have a lot. You have more than jeans, shirts, and, 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 and uh, shoes in this amazing store in the community, in the Black community. It's really a store. Um, it, it, ain't, it ain't a fly by night. It's, you can get, it's a one-stop shop. To tell the people how they can uh, uh, patronize you, sir, and come and get just about anything that they need. 
My store is called Exit 288. I'm right here at 314 North Bartow Street, which is in Cartersville, Georgia. We sell jeans, t-shirts, jewelry, a little bit of everything. You can check us out at www.exit288.com. Um, you can see the photos and you can just interact and jump in our chats at Brandon McCoy. That's on Facebook and Exit 288 on Facebook. You can Google us. We're at Exit 288. Now you also have a um, you have a second store which has a barber shop, uh, different in a studio in in that store. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. We have another location which is Exit Two Ninety, and that's off Nineteen Hundred Maple Street, Rome, Georgia, and that is a clothing store, a barber shop, and a recording studio as well. Ladies and gentlemen, that come from a grassroots starting with nothing and the advice that you have been given today the encouragement that you've been given today is to keep pressing keep pushing silence the noise of the naysayers that say that you can't do it keep on keeping on keep on if you're the only one that's encouraging yourself the word of god says sometimes you have to encourage yourself I just want to remind you that you are tuned in to Really Real Radio, and this is I'm Not Okay Why. Y'all take notice, take notice that we have a TV show that's coming your way real soon. What you'll need to do is you'll need to uh, go on the Roku de uh, device, and you need to download the GEI network, and of course, make that your favorite network because we're going to be coming your way soon. TV show. Also, I'm not okay. Why has merchandise? And you can follow us on Facebook. You can also follow us on Instagram. I have also a podcast called Relationship Lounge. Present, reveal, and heal. You don't want to miss it. It's a podcast that you can actually hear on all major outlets. All you have to do is go into the search and put Relationship Lounge 19. Not only that, you can follow us on YouTube. Just put in the search, Relationship Lounge 19. Listen, I'm Coach Deb. It's been a pleasure and an honor. Remember, you can't heal unless you reveal. Remember to love yourself, love everybody, and be an example. We'll see you next time.